Hello, I'm Greg Rutke and Rutke Mods, and welcome to probably the most exciting unboxing video I've ever done on this channel. And this is probably going to be one of the biggest videos I've ever done for the channel, I hope. Um, I'm really excited to unbox this. I'm so excited you would not believe how excited I am. And, um, well, quickly a backstory. Um, I haven't told you what this is yet. But if you read the title or uh, seen some of my posts in the last few days, you already know what it is. And I'm so, so amazed I found this. I've never heard of one. I've never seen one before. I didn't know they existed. And um, the eBay seller probably didn't even know I existed either because it's really beat up and very heavily used. And I think uh, the seller might have been at least the second owner and probably actually used it. It's in really bad shape, but we'll rebuild it and restore it. And uh, I even have parts for it already. Uh, not all the parts I need, but we'll get it working and looking beautiful again. But what is in this box is something I've never heard of, never seen before. It's a Blueberry iBook clamshell. And I spent $125 on it, and it's in really bad shape. I'm so excited! Not because it's a normal clamshell, because it's not. In fact, it's probably a prototype, and no one's ever seen one of these. Uh, I did hear someone mention something about Facebook post um, that someone else has had one of these, but I, I couldn't find that post. And uh, it's, uh, he said it was speculated it was for the education market for special abilities or something like that. But I don't think so because I've never, I've not seen anything about it. This is a Blueberry iBook clamshell with a 466 megahertz G3 in it and a firewire port. No, it's not a case swap. A case swap would require you to stick for instance, a second generation clamshell with a firewire port into a blueberry case and cut a hole in the side of it for the firewire port. Very easy to do, but you have to cut a hole in the side of it. This is not that. This was built by Apple. I guarantee it was built by Apple. And I've seen posts, uh, pictures on the uh, eBay listing. I was just quickly browsing for an iBook because I've been looking for some graphics and um, key lines and stuff, but I happened across this. I was like, oh, it's a board swap. I, let's see how bad they did it or if they even put the hole in the case for it. I started looking at the pictures and started realizing it wasn't a board swap. This actually has a real molded firewire port in the case according to the pictures. This is a blueberry case through and through. And then I started looking at other parts on uh, in the pictures and stuff. The serial number has this made the 22nd week of 2000. Uh, the first Firewire iBook clamshell came out in September of 2000. And um, this, so this was made in May of 2000. It's got a Firewire port in it, but the serial number identifies it as a first generation clamshell and it's got um, the model number of a first generation clamshell, but it's got a FireWire 400 port in it and a 466 megahertz G3 in it. This is going to be a two part video. The first video is going to be the unboxing video and the second video will be episode 21 of season three of my Power PC series where we will be tearing it down and trying to restore it the best I can currently. We'll be tearing it down. We'll be making it look nice. We'll see what's in it. I'm speculating it might have some kind of custom uh, CPU in it. I don't know if it's got the uh, second generation G3 in it or not. It might still have a um, first generation G3 that's been overclocked in it. Who knows? We won't know until we open it. But today we're going to be unboxing it. And I'm really excited because these pictures really make me think this is a prototype. We're going to find out. Oh, and another thing I noticed in the picture, it said machine name or model, I, I can't remember which it is, but it said iBook. Apple never did iBook for a machine model uh, in system profiler. 
This would have been either a PowerBook 2 comma 1 or PowerBook 2 comma 2, first generation, second generation iBook. This just says iBook. So there's something going on here. This thing is very rare. This thing was worth what I paid for it. This thing is probably worth more than what I paid for it. And by the time we're done with it, it's going to be the best example out there because it might actually be the only example out there. And because uh, I've never heard of them, have you? Blueberry with firewire built in and a 466 from the factory. Well, let's find out what's actually in this box and let's get to it. Okay, so we're getting ready to unbox it. I'm flinging this really sharp knife around. It's probably not a good thing, but I'm really excited and I want to do this. I'm shaking. So let's get to it. Okay, that works. So first off, we've got the yo-yo, which is really worn out and broken. It's very, very broken, um, but it might still work. I might actually grab another yo-yo just to be a safe, because I don't know if this actually works. I've never seen one this broken before. It's um, not the reason why I bought it. Uh, this is quite broken. So, But it came with a yo-yo. And in here we've got, this just, just looks like bubble wrap. I think that's just bubble wrap. Here's the iBook. It's well wrapped. What is that on the bottom? He didn't have any pictures of the box in the list. Wow, that's really getting annoying. But it's well packed, it's good. Oh my god. Oh my God. This actually has stickers on the bottom. Is this really a, I'm not sure. The sticker is really worn out on the bottom, but this is um, the this looks like the sticker that says for, this hasn't been FTC regulated yet. Right there. But if we look here, this has all the specs. This thing's been opened once and it does have some cracks we can't do a whole lot about because this bottom case is irreplaceable. But luckily the other parts are. Um, according to it, the optical drive is bad in the listing, um, but it looks like it even comes with a battery. This is, this looks like the battery might have leaked, but it said it did power on. Yeah, the battery's probably shot, but it's got, this says something about FTC regulations on it, which is usually a good sign. I don't see any um, stickers on it that says Apple, um, prototype on it. Um, I can't remember what the uh, company's called. They used to use it for the prototypes. But this thing right here, that I can't even get the battery case thing back on, it's, it's really worn out. We're going to have to do some massive restoration on it. But here's the big part. Firewire. It's got firewire, guys. This is unlike any other clamshell out there. There is no blueberry firewire clamshell with factory firewire in it. 
And from what I can tell, this is not an AV out port. So this isn't just a second generation board stuck in here. This is something special. This is something rare. And yes, it's missing the Apple logo, but we can replace that. In fact, I already have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I had a lot of clamshell parts. I don't have any nice enough to restore this other than that right there, and it needs some polishing done to it. It's a little, it was making a little bit of noise, but here we go. This is a prototype, guys. It's got some massive cracks in it, but the bezel itself is in pretty decent shape. This crack, I'm gonna to have to probably replace the top case. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I should keep this original. I don't know what you guys think. But this thing's super rare. It's so rare, I've never seen one, never heard of one. We're gonna hook it up and see exactly what's in it and how, what options it has. And we'll compare it to the other two, the first and second generations, um, really quick also. So yeah, prototype guys. This has to be a prototype. And I wish I could read that sticker because it's, it's, it's definitely an FTC sticker right there. And it's, this actually says video out on the sticker. This actually might be a prototype second generation board in it. And uh, this has been opened at least once before because it's got an 18 gig hard drive in it. And this says six gig. But the guy that used this daily um, yeah, this, this actually was probably used daily because of the shape it's in, but it was, it was well tested. It also says it came with a DVD drive, which the first generations didn't. Um, I don't know if this is a DVD drive and it's apparently broken, but that's something awesome. So I'm going to go grab my other two clamshells real quick. We're going to compare them really quick, and I'm also going to grab a trustworthy yo-yo so we don't fry something with that broken one. So let's get to it. Okay, guys. So first off, here's the prototype, and we can compare the ports here. But first off, the first generations did indeed have a pinout for firewire on the board, but they didn't have the port or all the components for it. And I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. I've showed you in one of my previous videos. But it was very possible that there could have been an, a transitional system. This is that missing link right here, the transitional system, no doubt. If we look here, we've got dial-up modem, okay? This is the first generation, this is the second generation. This is that prototype. This has got to be a prototype for the second generation or a, uh, a production demo, something like that. Who knows what it is. It's going to take a lot of research to figure out what it is. And that's what really got me when I saw this thing. Because I knew the seller had no clue what he had. And I snapped it up the second I saw that picture. Because this is a blueberry bottom case. This is definitely just a blueberry bottom case. And what else we have here? We got the modems. We've got 10 100 Ethernet. USB 1.1. No firewire. Firewire 400, Firewire 400, audio out, audio out, probably. It might be more than that. And audio and video out, right here. The second generations had audio and video out. It went to composite, uh, and you could hook it up to a TV. Um, this one, I won't really know until I get an adapter for it, if that is actually uh, an AV port, and if that is, this is probably just a second generation board, uh, pre-production one, but we don't know yet. And we won't until I get that AV cable or tear this thing down, which we'll be doing in a later episode. But if we open them up here, we've got some interesting stuff. This is hard to do with one hand. 
But right now, we're going to be running them all side by side so we can figure out what we're doing here. This is, should have an operating system on it, okay? So right here we have a first generation Blueberry 300 megahertz G3, normal Blueberry, plain and simple. Then we've got the prototype. Looks the same when it's opened up, really no difference. Okay, all the keys are the same. You know, let's actually see if this is unlocked. See if we get any more clues underneath. No, it just looks like a normal clamshell underneath. Um, and it's got an airport card in it, which I didn't even know it came with. That's, that's cool. Now, knowing that this hard drive's been replaced, we're probably not gonna get anything um, prototypey off the hard drive, sadly, but hey, it's, uh, what can you do about that? It feels pretty good. And, okay, got first and mid-generation. Let's go with that, middle one. Then we've got the second generation right here where they changed the case and all that stuff. There they are. So I've got all the um, yo-yos plugged in. We're going to first turn this one on and make sure it works. These two are preset up with Tiger and should be just boot right up. This is actually XGA modded, so the resolution is going to be different. The resolution is supposed to match these two, but it's XGA modded. I talked about that in my 1000 uh, subscriber uh, special, which is, I think, episode 11 of the Power PC series of season one. It was a while ago. <laughs> but we'll, we'll have them all side by side. We're going to boot this one up first and see what happens. And then what we're going to do is have them booted up all together. We're going to run... Um, system profiler and see what's different between the three and there should be a lot different because that's a 300 466 366 all indigos were 366 unless someone upgraded the board so it's a 366 this is faster and older so it's going to be interesting this is kind of like a special edition graphite or something like that really neat so yeah i'm going to set the camera back up and we'll get them all hooked up and get this one booted up so let's go okay guys here's the moment of truth we're going to boot up the prototype and see what it does it should just run i hope um the light lit up when i plugged it in so let's see what happens That's a good sign. Screen kicked on. I don't know what operating system it's running. The first generation cut off at Panther, although you can run Tiger on it with no issue. Um, it's just the firewire limitation. The uh, second generation cut off at Tiger because it's the last G3 supported uh, operating system. This thing, we'll find out what it has because since it has a firewire port, it technically can update to Tiger, and the screen resolution's funky. This looks like it's running Panther. Not really sure, we'll see. What is going on with the screen resolution? Of course, I don't have the password for it. Password. One, two, three, four, five, six. User. Who made this computer? Oh, it works. Ah, okay. I think this is Panther. I am quite curious to know. Yeah, this looks like Panther. I am curious if this would just uh, install Tiger if you put a disc in it. 
Why is the resolution so messed up though? That is odd. It, what is this? It is indeed Panther. So, first let's... I don't even see the dock. It's the right resolution, but it's not fitting onto the screen correctly. I guess that's right now. The dock just showed up for a split second. Let's try dock. The dock is not showing, but um, it's weird. I don't, I'm not sure if the screen resolution is right or not. It looks kind of wrong. Uh, but it does seem to, no, it looks like it's cutting a lot off. There's something wrong with the display here. Or it's Panther itself. Which we could figure that out pretty easily. Um, but before we do that, let's get these two started up. And let's go into system preferences together and see what we can see. I just thought about something. The reason why this screen resolution might be so wrong is this actually might have an XGA setting set up in the open firmware because it seems to be cutting off enough of the screen where this would be XGA. Um, this isn't an XGA LCD panel and I can probably fix it by doing a command and open firmware. But this looks like, um, yeah, it's been zoomed in by an open firmware command. Uh, it might just be real easy to fix, but I'm a little afraid to do a param reset right now because it might break something. Um, but we've got both of them booted up now to compare this with, and I'm going to take the camera off the tripod. We're going to show you just how special this thing is. Okay, so I set the XGA back to 800 by 600 on this one, so it's the native resolution of a clamshell. Um, and let's go into Apple System Profiler. Here's the real Blueberry, the factory production one, 300 megahertz, more info. We'll go over to the Indigo, which was the second generation. Three sixty six more info. Okay, here is the second generation info. Here is the first generation info. Now with Panther, the about this Mac um, system profiler, I mean, is a little different. So it's going to show up a little differently on this. But let's find out what's actually in it. 466, more info. Okay. Machine name, iBook, machine model, PowerBook 2, 1. iBook, PowerBook 2, 2. Machine model, iBook. It's the first strange thing there. Now, this also says it's a 2.1 a 750, so this is indeed a second generation board probably. But this is where we start getting interesting again, because the sales order number actually gives the model number, okay? And this model number is that right there. Now, um, I believe this has a newer boot ROM on it. This has the original boot ROM on it, which I never updated, because you don't really have to. Uh, but I think this is just a normal boot ROM. The thing is, this boot ROM is for a first generation, from what I can tell, because this has an updated boot ROM, and it's four. I, it's, it's, this is confusing, but... This has, this is definitely a second generation CPU. Um, so that's one thing. Let's go over to graphics. Graphics. 
graphics. Graphics. So the second generation came with an 8 megabyte M3. The first came with a Mobility L4 giga, my megabyte. And this one came with a second generation M3, 8 meg. It's very interesting. And last of all, it's got FireWire. It's actually working. It's reporting it as a 400 megabyte. This is a prototype, guys. This is the strangest prototype because this is, it's so odd. I'm also wondering, what is the uh, CD-ROM drive in this? This is a DVD drive. This is kind of like, um, this must be like a prototype for a um, second generation special edition or uh, key lime. It's interesting, because if this is all original parts, this is very interesting. I want to try to boot this up into a Tiger installer and see if it will let me do it. Uh, but as we can see, this doesn't match that or that in anything. Um, this does have mostly second generation hardware in it, months before this was ever developed. So this is definitely some kind of production, pre-production run uh, demo unit prototype. Um, this thing is a lot, uh, worth a lot more than I paid for it. Or none. No doubt in my mind. I want to boot this into a Tiger disc and see if it would do it. Um, the guy said that the CD drive was bad, but who knows if it really is. So, real quick, I'm going to shut this off. First, let me fix the resolution. I'll speed this up for you guys. There it goes. Okay. Move that to the side. Let's see if the optical driveway jacked. The eject button does not work, but it does indeed eject. Oh, that is interesting. This has something that I don't even think the production second generation had. Let's see. It does. The faceplate is screwed on on these. They, these things are notorious for falling off and being lost. This thing was actually screwed on. It looks like it might be a little broken. This drive is basically not replaceable. Although, in fact, I could probably replace it with a uh, drive from like a Pismo because I think this is the same layout. It's interesting. But if you look here on the second generation, this faceplate will just pop off. I'm not going to pop it off because they're a pain to keep on. Uh, in fact, I might have glued this one on. But there's nothing holding this on but some clips. This has screws in it. This thing's definitely a prototype. It has to be. So what we're going to do is see if this is actually broken. I'm hoping it's not because this is actually a DVD drive, which is nice. So, one second while I find my Tiger Disc. Tiger Disc. See if it does something. It is spinning up. If I boot this up in a Tiger, it might actually fix something with it. It's trying to read it. It didn't read it. The disk drive is indeed probably bad. Pretty sure. That's um it's hard to do this without a dock. On left. There we go. There's the dock. Finder. Yeah, it definitely does not see any disks, but this is a FireWire system. 
So first off, I'm wondering, will this have target disc mode on it? Let's see here. Boot. This this layout so screwed up. There it goes. It does not have an option for target disc mode, from what I can tell. That's interesting, because this is a firewire. So what we're going to do is we're going to eject this drive again. I'm going to go get my firewire disc drive and see if it will actually let me do something with it. I'll be right back. Okay, it's time to find out if this firewire port actually works or if it's just for show. It reports it in the system, so in theory it should just work. We're going to find out. I got my firewire drive here, which is actually a converted super drive. I stuck an actual real Apple super drive into it, so it's always working with firewire max here. Okay, let's see if it's, it's connected. The drive knows it is. This will only power on if it detects a firewire connection. Put that disc in. See if it will spin up. It is indeed a working firewire port. And as we can see here, boom, firewire guys. Oh my God. Let's see if this will detect it in the boot menu. We'll shut it down. I gotta figure out why this screen is not right. But it all comes with the territory of something like this. I'm sure that this thing was used daily in its life. So that screen wasn't always like that. We gotta figure out why it's doing that. Let's go into the boot menu. Main Tosh hard drive, okay. Hey, 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 it scored a boot off of it. You know, I'm wondering, does this really have target disk mode and it's not showing up in Panther because it knows what model it is? Let's find out. Hold in T. It's got target disk mode in it. Whoa. Okay. Now let's boot it up into the Tiger disk. See if that fixes the resolution issues. If it will let me use the Tiger. Tell you what guys, I'm gonna set you on the tripod real quick. Okay guys, I got you on the tripod now. We still have the uh, firewire drive plugged in. Let's see if it will boot up into Tiger or not. Whoa! It didn't have any lockouts here. This is literally a second generation for sure. It didn't try to lock it out during the boot. I could install tire right now. Let's move you guys a little bit here. This is incredible. And I think this might have fixed it. It says this battery is charging, which I doubt. System Profiler. Yeah, it looks like the Panther install has just got a screwed up resolution because this looks no normal now. And now it's identifying as a PowerBook 2,2. 2. 
but it still has the old model number on it. That's interesting. This is a, this is officially, it has to be a second generation clamshell prototype, guys. And I've got it right here. This is incredible. Wow. It's all working. So here you go, guys. The battery is indeed charging according to this. Power. Even though it's 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 definitely been leaking some from the damage on it, it looks like it's actually trying to charge the battery. I, I, I want to take this battery out. I'm, uh, it's got me a little concerned. But... Let's see what happens if I unplug it real quick. Okay, yeah, the battery's still good. <laughs> but yeah, hey, that's, that's kind of expected. But it is trying to charge the battery. I, I can't believe this. Guys, I own a prototype. And it, it's, a, it's a strange transitional model. It's, it's got the case of a first generation and the model number of a first generation and the serial number of a first generation. But it is indeed a second generation board and it's got all the parts on it from a second generation. And yeah. So, in fact, I'm not gonna boot back into this. We know it will boot into the Tiger installer now and we now know it identifies itself as a PowerBook 2.2. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go once more over this entire case and show you all the interesting things about it. And yes, it is beat to heck, but I think it actually will clean up pretty nicely. Uh, other than that crack in the top case, there's not a whole lot on here that can't be fixed uh, really easily, especially the missing logo, which I can just replace with this. It needs polished first but I, I'm lucky I did have a full logo. So we could fix that too. This thing's, this thing's really amazing. So I'm going to eject this disc. We're gonna shut it down. We'll go over the outside of it one more time and just uh, take a look at everything. So let's go. So once again, this is a second generation iBook clamshell prototype. It has to be. We can first verify that it is a pre-production model by looking at the bottom. Here we have all the specs of everything it came with and um, all this interesting stuff. We're going to have to verify that this is a video outboard uh, because the case, of course, says it's just a normal headphone jack. Um, I want to try to fix the DVD-ROM since it's the original one. Um, this has faded some. I don't think I could fix that, but I want to keep it as original as possible because this is definitely one of those FTC stickers about not selling this thing until it's certified. So that's something interesting. Take this off. See if there's anything special with the battery. I doubt there is. Other than the fact it's definitely damaged. Okay, this is not the original battery. This is trash. Literally trash. It's going in the trash. Oh my God, it's really a... It's really a prototype, guys. It's a Matty Mac from the development team. I got a prototype! Oh my god. This is a prototype. And that's what gave it away was that one port. We got a prototype. This is a prototype. So in episode 21, 
of season three of the Power PC series, this is going to be the topic. We're going to tear it down. I guarantee you on the board it will say PVT. Um, we're going to tear it down, make sure everything's fine in it, see what's in it. And, oh, I, I can't catch my breath. I, oh, wow. Um, we're going to, we're going to tear it down, make sure everything's fine in it. And I'll, um, I'll set it up. We'll, we'll do some tests on it. We're also going to try to restore it some. We're going to try to fix that DVD drive. But I can now verify and tell you, indeed, yes, this is a real prototype of a second generation clamshell. The PowerBook 2,2. It's a PowerBook 2,2 prototype in a blue in a blueberry case, blueberry serial number, blueberry model number on a second generation board. Wow, I was not expecting that. This is really, indeed, a prototype. I found a prototype. I'm sure the guy had no clue what he really had. This is, this is amazing. I can't believe I found this because he never took any pictures of the bottom. The only thing that tipped me off that something wasn't right was that. This thing is going to take a lot of restoring. But we got a second generation prototype, guys. I'm amazed. I am, I am speechless. I am shocked. Wow. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Don't forget, I am now sponsored by SellYourMac.com. So if you have an Apple device you'd like to sell, just go to SellYourMac.com slash RodKMods and sell them something. It will help me out and it will help you out because you'll be making money. And also don't forget, I do now have a Patreon. If you want to see these videos a day early, sometimes even earlier than that because uh, my last two videos have been uploaded um, back to back basically. Uh, just come over there and help support me. It will help me find stuff like this. This was worth every single penny I spent on it. In fact, I could probably turn it around and sell this right now as a prototype. And the sky's the limit on it. But I'm not going to. We're going to clean it up. We're going to make it back to the way it was supposed to be. It's... I, I'm... Wow. I, I'm so happy. I'm amazed. Wow. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching, and this has been a Red K Mods video. Hey guys, just a little update. I um, was talking to Ken yesterday uh, through text and showing him the system through some pictures and asked him if he could contact HAP. Yeah, the same HAP that's in this video right up here where uh, he was in vintage uh, Apple Vault uh, number seven. And um, he was also in, uh, an earlier one too, I believe, but Hap from a little bite different.com. He actually has a uh, clamshell prototype just like this. In fact, he uh, verified that mine is probably indeed really real. Um, he says he's never really seen any other ones other than his and mine so far. He said there was a lot of PVT versions that ended up getting released into production because they pushed them out so quickly. Um, so there's a lot of PVT boards out there, but there's no legit prototypes out there. And the one he has on his site is a 366. I've got a 466, which is pretty neat. And I just actually contacted him to see if he'll help me maybe uh, clean it up more and get it going and stuff. I'm going to show you some uh, pictures of what the FCC sticker is supposed to look like um, from his site. And um, hopefully maybe someday we can do something with him. Uh, I am planning on still filming um, episode 21, though, uh, where we will be tearing it down. But uh, I'm going to see what he says about 
restoring it first. So that should be fun. Anyway, I thought you guys might want a little update that it is indeed a prototype and it's extremely rare. Um, and hey, it's, it's pretty neat. So yeah. All right, bonus material guys. That wasn't the only package I got today. In fact, I got two of these right here, really cheap, also in the middle of the day. And this is a teaser for an upcoming video. Um, I knew they were coming, so I've already ordered a bunch of aftermarket heat sinks. Now, real quick, what we're looking at is the same thing we unboxed when um, I did the 2.7 G5 unboxing video uh, from Nick. I got one of these from him also. This is a TI-4600, the most powerful OS9 graphics card um, out there currently anyway. Um, and I now have four and a half of them. When I say that, I mean I have one in my Quicksilver, which currently has one of these aftermarket heat sinks on it. And then I've got four in front of me. Um, the day after the uh, 2.7 unboxing, I got one of these in the mail. Uh, I'm not going to reveal where I got each from because one of them's broken. Uh, but I got one of these in the mail. And um, it was really cheap. It was 89 bucks, which these things go on eBay for 200 plus dollars. So it was a good deal. Well, one of these is dead now. Uh, it just never powered on when I got it. Um, it. It caused a lot of problems. This is going to be a future DOS Dude 1 video or project. We're not sure which yet. Um, he's going to try to swap chips or something on it. The main chip's probably fried. But it's worth fixing because how rare expensive they are. So I got another one the next day after that unboxing, and that one was 89 bucks. Then I got two more for $75 each. Oh yeah. So in an upcoming video, I haven't tested these two yet, but I'm pretty sure they work. The seller said they worked and came from a working system. So we're going to test them, of course, in that video, but it's going to be really fun. We're going to upgrade these crappy heat sinks that have the fan that seizes up. I'm really flicking that, and you see the fan's not really moving. We're going to be putting these on. This is the best heat sink on the market for them. And uh, they're really cheap, and they still sell them on Amazon, believe it or not. Uh, but I've bought out probably most of their stock in the last uh, year or so, <laughs> and recommending it to other people and stuff. But I thought you guys would be interested to know that uh, there's going to be a, a TI-4600 video coming again. I did one a, a few seasons ago, I think, a season or so ago on the Power PC series when I was doing this. But now we're going to do it in bulk on three more cards. And the other card's going to get fixed eventually. And then we'll do it on that too. And I also have another card uh, Colin currently has. It's a Quadro 4, which can be probably flashed into one of these. We're going to try to flash it into one of these. It's from a PC, but uh, that would be fun. And I'm very blessed and very lucky to have these. So I thought you guys might like to check out what's coming up soon. Anyway, once again, thanks for watching.